butterflies are amazing creatures. Now how they come into being, why that's even more amazing. Today on Alley Picked, I want to immortalize this butterfly in wood. I'm going to need a pattern. Now, I'm too cheap to buy one, so off to Google Images I go. How in the world did we ever live without Google? If you're looking for a pattern, there's thousands of pictures to choose from. However, sometimes it takes a little computer manipulation to get the image from a photograph to a usable pattern. Here's one method that I use. Once you find the image you want, you may need to isolate that image, rotate it, enlarge it, or shrink it. There's a lot of apps and programs out there to do this. If you're not very computer savvy, another way is to just use your printer to enlarge or shrink the image. Most new printers have this feature. The problem with the pattern that I picked is that the wing on the right side isn't very clear and it even looks a little different than the wing on the left. To fix this, I'm gonna use my iMac photo program to flip the image horizontally. Now I've got an exact mirror image I can use to replace the wing on the right side. Now that I've got my two images, I put them into Google Docs, which by the way is free. I change the page setup from portrait to landscape. I set the margins to 0.1. Now I can print both copies, the one with the wing on the left and the corrected one with the wing on the right. I'll cut it out and tape it to the first copy and now I've got a perfect pattern to use to transfer this image to a piece of wood. For the wood, I'm using this Live Edge Basswood Plank. I bought it from Hobby Lobby. Basswood is a softer wood and it's great for carving. Using graphite paper, I'll transfer this image onto the wood in preparation for the carving. Now I'm ready to start cutting the wood. For that, I use a carving knife. Here's a set that I bought on Amazon, but there's really only two knives that I'll use from this set. The bigger blade for the bigger cuts and the smaller blade for the smaller, more intricate cuts. It's very important to keep the blade sharp while you're carving. So to do that, I use this 2000 grit, extremely fine sandpaper. The blade has a very fine and sharp edge, which I match with the sandpaper. I make about 10 passes on each side, more or less depending on how dull it is. I follow the sandpaper by stropping the blade with a piece of leather which I glued to this piece of wood. This is some polishing compound which I apply to the leather and strop it a few more times. This technique is called chip carving which is basically the opposite of relief carving. I'm carving the butterfly into the wood rather than removing the bits that are not a butterfly. Carving the wood takes practice. First, get in a comfortable position. Rotate the piece as needed to get the best cut. Let me explain the basics of what I'm gonna be doing by first showing you some cuts on a scrap piece of wood. Here are some common shapes I might encounter on the project. To carve a rectangle, I run the blade along the edge at an angle. The tip of the blade should go deep enough into the wood to the center of the rectangle. I do this angle on all four sides, and on the last cut, the wood chip should pop out. Not all of my cuts are perfect, so I may need to go back and remove some of the remaining bits. Narrower shapes are easier to cut cleanly. The wider the shape, the deeper you're gonna need to go, as well as adjusting the angle slightly.
At this point, I can apply a wood finish or leave it as it is. I can even paint it. I am not a painter, so it's a little risky for me to attempt this. Eh, live on the edge, let's do it. Since this is a Google image of a monarch butterfly, that's the colors I'm gonna attempt to match. I'll use acrylic paint that you can pick up at any craft store. If I don't have the exact colors, I'll mix some to better match the actual colors. Here's a technique to add a little red without obscuring the orange, which I already laid down. Water down the red and apply it on top of the orange. Mm -hmm. 